Hi everyone, welcome to this session of the Tiger Academy, US Stock Financial Statements for Beginners. Congratulations to all of you for having come this far in the course. The previous four lessons have prepared you well for reading financial statements. Starting from this lesson, we will officially begin to apply what you've learned to investing. When you think about it, just what is it that concerns us most when evaluating a company for investment? I guess you'd say, whether the company makes money and will continue to make money, whether it has smart management, and whether the company has ample cash or is deep in debt, right? We can address those concerns using four metrics, profitability, growth, operational capability, and solvency. And I'll tell you a little secret. Professional investment institutions also use these four metrics when analyzing financial statements. In other words, if you can master these metrics, you too will be able to easily find quality listed companies by reading financial reports. The first metric, profitability. Profitability simply indicates a company's ability to make a profit. This is generally expressed as the amount of profit over a certain period of time. Simply put, Profitability shows whether a company is good at making money or not. How exactly do we go about assessing the profitability of a company? I've classified the relevant metrics, which we have already learned, into two subgroups. One subgroup focuses on operating profit, that is, the percentage of the company's revenue that can be turned into profit. Do you remember this chart? It clearly illustrates the relationship between gross profit, operating profit, and net income. We can also use the formulas below to quickly calculate gross profit margin, operating profit margin, and net income margin. Gross profit margin equals gross profit divided by total revenue. Operating profit margin equals operating profit divided by total revenue. Net income margin equals net income divided by total revenue. Gross profit margin demonstrates the competitiveness of a company's products. Operating profit margin measures management's ability to generate profits from its main business after subtracting costs from revenue. Net income margin is a company's bottom line and shows the level of a company's profitability on a net basis. Another subgroup of profitability focuses on assets, that is, how much profit can be generated on the investment of shareholders. In this section, we'll focus on ROE and ROA. ROE equals net income divided by total shareholders' equity. ROA equals net income divided by total assets. In practice, you won't need to actually calculate these ratios yourself, as they are readily available in the financial data section of each company in the Tiger Trade app. We invest in the company hoping to earn the maximum return. ROA measures how much return the company makes for shareholders while ROA measures how much return a company makes for both its shareholders and creditors. With this principle in hand, we will certainly be able to assess the profitability of a company. The second metric, growth. We can classify growth into two subgroups, revenue and assets. The revenue subgroup focuses on revenue growth, operating profit growth, and net income growth. The asset subgroup focuses on total asset growth and net asset growth. Let's review the five formulas that we learned in previous lessons. Don't bother memorizing these formulas because you'll find them readily available in the Tiger Trade app. In terms of growth, a company should ideally not only be able to turn a profit, but it should be profitable over the long term. And that profit should grow from year to year. These are the kinds of companies that will generate significant returns for you. The third metric, operational capability. Operational capability is a measure of how many times a company can do business over a period of time. Using the example we gave previously in the course, Jack's Hot Pot Restaurant had a much higher turnover rate than Rose's Hot Pot Restaurant, with the same amount of traffic. That translated into a big difference in revenue between the two businesses. That is why asset turnover is so important. You can find the four turnover ratios in the Tiger Trade app. We covered these in the lesson on balance sheets, and so we'll not elaborate further on them here. Just remember that the higher the value of these four turnover ratios, the stronger a company's operational ability and the more efficient its use of capital and inventory. The fourth metric, solvency. Solvency refers to a company's ability to repay debt when it is due. If it can't, it's a red flag. So, how can we know in advance the level of a company's solvency? 
We generally assess solvency using three ratios, the current ratio, the quick ratio, and short-term solvency. First, let's look at the current ratio. Just keep in mind that a current ratio above 2 is considered excellent, while a current ratio below 1 is terrible, probably indicating short-term financial distress in repaying debts. A quick ratio of 1 is generally considered normal, indicating there is 1 US dollar in current assets available to repay every 1 US dollar in current liabilities. In other words, solid short-term solvency. A quick ratio below 1 indicates short-term solvency risk, while a quick ratio far above 1 indicates weak cash management. Short-term solvency assesses the relationship between the current assets and current liabilities of a company. If current assets can cover current liabilities, then the company is strongly solvent. Short-term solvency equals net cash flow from operating activities divided by current liabilities. Generally speaking, this ratio should be maintained at 1. I should add here that, just like the quick ratio, a higher short-term solvency ratio is not always better. A huge amount of cash and cash equivalents on the books, which generate low returns, indicates poor cash management and weak profitability. Again, you can find these ratios in the financial analysis section of the Tiger Tray app. Well, I'm confident that you now understand the magic of these four metrics. I've summarized them in the chart below for your convenience. Now, whenever you read a financial statement, just use this chart as a reference in your analysis. If you base your analysis on these four indicators, it will help you assess many metrics and it can save you a lot of time. See you next time!